Howdy. Welcome back to Dion Talk. In today's video, I'm going to talk about what came first, a million dollar net worth or a million dollars in debt. When I sat down this morning to do the math, I actually got an answer I wasn't expecting. And at the end of today's video, I'm going to share how I am going to get paid to Snowbird. The first concept to understand when I'm talking about what came first, a million dollars in debt or a million dollar net worth is that there is a big difference between good debt and bad debt. If the goal was just to get into a million dollars in debt, it probably wouldn't be that hard. There are a lot of people out there trying to get us to borrow money to buy their stuff. The goal is to get into good debt. Bad debt costs you money. Good debt makes you money and usually somebody else pays the debt off for you. When I started my path to financial freedom, I was 40, a single parent with three kids, and I was starting from a position of $89,000 in bad debt. But what I never mentioned about that $89,000 in bad debt is when I first found out about it, it was over $200,000 in bad debt in my name that I didn't know about. I'm still not sure I will ever have the courage to make a video explaining how you can have over $200,000 in bad debt in your name without knowing about it, but I am going to make a video that explains how I took that over $200,000 in bad debt and got the creditors to agree to drop that down to the $89,000 that I ended up having to pay back. But not today. There are several ways to use good debt to reach financial freedom. The strategy that I chose is purchasing rental properties with 30 year fixed rate low interest loans. Some I house hacked so that I can use owner occupied loans so that I can even get a lower down payment and a better interest rate. Some were purchased as investment properties. The goal is these properties will cash flow and the tenants will pay the mortgages off over 30 years. The rents will continue to go up and the mortgages will stay the same. Leverage is a powerful tool, but it's also dangerous. So the goal is to not be over leveraged. Originally, I was gonna take out four mortgages. I figured that was the number that larger banks limited people to and they must have some data that showed that that was the safest amount of mortgages with the least amount of foreclosures and the least amount of loan defaults. But since then, interest rates have dropped down so low that to me, it makes sense to go all the way up to 10 mortgages as long as I can stay 70% or less leveraged, maintaining that 30% equity or greater. And at the end of today's video, I'm going to leave a link to a video that I made that explains my strategy for protecting your portfolio. And in this video, I'm not going to debate whether using all cash or leverage is the best strategy. I will let those guys figure that out. When I purchased my first couple of rental properties, I really wasn't looking at my net worth. I didn't even know how to calculate it. What I was focused on was cash flow. My goal was to generate enough cash flow from cash producing assets to replace my living expenses. I was really tired of my sources of income being taken away. After Desert Storm, the Marine Corps downsized in 2008. The police department I was at shrunk because there was no money coming into the city because of the recession. So I got laid off at the same time as a bunch of other qualified officers. And when I was looking around trying to think that there has to be a better way to make money than selling my life one hour at a time, especially when those ways of selling my life one hour at a time kept getting taken away. And my solution was to invest in rental properties. With cash flow as my focus, I was able to reach financial independence with only seven units. I lived in a house, moved into an apartment to figure out if I could handle being a landlord, rented the house out. First couple of tenants were really bad, but once I got a good tenant in there, I purchased a duplex and moved in using the house hacking method, living in one unit and renting out the other, which offset my housing costs and increased my savings rate by over $1,200 a month. A couple of years later, purchased another duplex. Almost two years later, purchased another duplex. So I had three duplexes and a single family house. I was living in a unit basically with no mortgage. I spent the next two years paying off the single family house. My goal was to maintain four mortgages so that I benefited from leverage, but I wasn't over leveraged. When I hit these four mortgages, I still wasn't focused on net worth. I was still really focused on cash flow. And while I had reached financial freedom because my pure cash flow after all expenses was about $2,700 a month. And when I was a police officer, my take home pay was about $2,600 a month. And at that point in time, I still was paying a mortgage. So I wasn't rich, but I had reached what people call lean fi at my $2,700 a month in pure cash flow. What was happening now is what I've referred to as the income snowball and each cash flowing asset increased my savings rate so much to where I got to the point where I was living off of the money that was coming in from rentals. So 100% of my income from my job was saved for the next purchase. 
I spent the next couple of years saving up the down payment for the fourplex that I'm currently house hacking. A little over 10 years ago, I was making $17 an hour teaching people how to drive trucks. So for me to have the ability to save $141,000 to have as a down payment while I'm hunting for properties is mind blowing to me. I never expected to have that much money, but that income snowball is a real thing. And when I was purchasing this fourplex, when I was sitting down at the table, signing the closing docs, that's when it dawned on me that I figured out which came first, a million dollar net worth or a million dollars in debt, chicken or the egg. And here's the answer. This is what happened first. Yes. It was exactly at the same moment. When I was signing for the loan for the fourplex, that put my debt over a million dollars. But the down payment and the equity I was purchasing and the appreciation of the other properties put my net worth over a million dollars more than the debt. And there have been times when I'm talking to somebody about my strategy and how I'm buying cash flowing properties to reach financial independence and what cash flow is. Anytime the subject of the debt comes up and they realize that I was getting close to a million dollars in debt, their reactions go across the whole spectrum. <laughs> Some people have said, that's terrifying. I would never want that much debt. Other people who understand the idea of good debt have said, that's impressive. And myself at that point in time, I was wishing that it was $2 million in good debt. Not just $2 million in debt, but $2 million in debt while I was able to maintain 70% or less leverage, so 30% in equity, because that meant that as my debt was growing, my equity position would be growing too. Purchasing the fourplex happened at the beginning of 2020. At the end of 2020, in November, I closed on a triplex, which increased my debt and increased my net worth. But every month, every single month, there is appreciation on my properties, and I'm experiencing principal pay down. The tenants are paying off the debt. Like I said at the beginning of the video, one of the things about good debt is that somebody else pays it off for you. Another aspect of good debt that I hardly ever hear mentioned is that it's a hedge against inflation. When I get these mortgages, they're for a set amount. Over the next 30 years, I'm gonna pay this amount of money. Well, actually the tenants are gonna pay this amount of money. But when the dollar loses value because of inflation, my mortgages stay the same. The value of my properties goes up and the mortgages stay the same and the dollar gets weaker. It's one of the best hedges against inflation. So with the pandemic and all of the stimulus and all the money that we're spending, the dollar is going to lose value because there are more dollars in circulation. There isn't more property. And at the beginning of this video, I talked about how I was going to get paid to Snowbird. So what I'm doing now is I'm hunting for a fourplex in and around the Phoenix area of Arizona. I'm in a fourplex now here in Washington state where I am paid about $1,700 a month in pure cash flow, even though I'm living in one of the units. So I'm being paid to live here. My goal is to buy another fourplex in Phoenix or around Phoenix where I'm also paid to live there. So when I'm in Washington, I'm making money from both properties. When I'm in Arizona, I'm making money from both properties. I know of a lot of people who snowbird and have two houses, but they're paying for both of them. This seems to me like an easier way to go. Some of the benefits of this next fourplex that I'm gonna purchase on top of being able to be paid to Snowbird is that when I purchase it, it's going to add to my good debt, add to my net worth, add to my cash flow, add to the amount of my principal pay down that I'm getting every month where the tenants pay off my mortgages. And across all of these properties, I haven't even mentioned the tax benefits of write-offs, depreciation, 1031 exchange, the stepped up tax system, where I'm probably gonna be able to delay or never pay taxes on the income from these properties. I really hope I made it worth your time clicking on this video today. If you liked it, if you thought you got anything out of it, please hit like, hit subscribe, share this with a friend, because maybe they need to hear that there's a difference between good and bad debt. Until my next video, thanks for coming to my Dion talk. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.